Hey there. How we doing? Excited to hang with you guys tonight. I always drop the first comment, so we will do that first. And as y'all come on, say hi, tell me where you're from. I don't need addresses. Uh, just tell me what state you're in. Or if you're in Utah, tell me where you're at because I am in Salem. There we go. About an hour south of Salt Lake. And uh, today we're gonna paint a little bit. We're actually just putting primer on. So if you were live with us last night, you know what's happening. If you don't and you're wondering what this thing is, uh, I'm doing a live series on a mini jewelry box and we're going to make it over. And I thought it would be kind of fun for all of you to join along. I'm breaking it up into bite-sized pieces. So I'm giving you a smaller amount of information at a time, small amounts of information at a time. It's been a long day. <laughs> so that you can learn, you can process it, take it all in, and then you'll have shorter lives to watch the replays on. So yesterday we started with prep work. Prep work is really important. If you missed that, go back and watch it. Uh, I kind of go into cleaning and sanding a piece and give you the, the whys and why nots and how to's of it, all right? And then we sanded with our rad pads, our surf prep rad pads. Today, we are going to prime. So yesterday, if you watched, we were having some trouble with, we were, I was, but I'm just including all of you that were there last night, having trouble getting the hardware off. And it's because instead of just little screws or little nails to hold in the hardware, it had brads that went all the way through the wood. I'll show you. All the way through the wood and then um, they split out. So I couldn't pull the hardware off without removing the velvet interior. So that's where we're at. I decided to take all of the velvet interior pieces off just where the hardware was to remove the hardware. And then I can think on it if I wanna keep the blue or if I want to toss that and do something different. Hey Jane, thank you for saying hi. It's good to see you too. So that is the plan. Today, we are going to prime, and I'm also going to go over concept and design with you, all right? So I thought it would be fun to kind of take you through the process of how my, my mind works and how I come up with an idea uh, or the finish and how I put different products and um, different styles together to create something that's cohesive. Hey, Karen. All right, so what are we doing? We are going to prime with Wiesel Primer. I'm gonna use the gray primer. Wiesel Primer comes in clear, white, gray, and dark gray, and it is an excellent prep primer. Uh, I use it for painting with the chalk line, the chalk synthesis paint. I also use it for the one hour enamel. It's incredible. It's really durable and strong, and it is a stain eliminating primer. What does that mean? It means it will block your stains, but it's a water-based primer, so it's pretty cool. If you want to block in tannins, tannins are those nasty things that are in the wood, typically in older wood, a lot of times you'll find it in antiques, that will seep through and bleed color into your paint. So if you've ever painted a piece white and wondered why a little while later it started having little yellow areas in it, it's because of the tannins that are coming through from the wood. And uh, whatever primer was used, if there was a primer, wasn't uh, applied properly and didn't do the job of blocking those tannins in, but the Wise Owl Stain Limiting Primer does. So it's a, it has a little bit sciency. You've got to play by the rules with this. I'm not a play by the rules girl, but I do with this because it makes a difference. When you apply the primer, uh, I will apply it. I wait a minimum of four to six hours before I apply the second coat, all right? What that's gonna do is that's going to kind of allow that to fully dry and seal in some of those tannins. After about six hours, I'll apply the second coat, and then I wait overnight until I start painting it. So typically, if I'm working on a large piece of furniture, I'll do that in the evening, and then the next morning I'll come and start applying the paint to it, okay? So that's how it works. I love this water base. It's not stinky. It's easy to use. If it gets on my hands, it doesn't bother me, uh, but I'll probably wear gloves tonight just, just for the heck of it. Oh, thanks so much for saying hi. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you guys are here. It's fun to have uh, some familiar faces watching. Okay, well, let's prime. 
And then we'll let the primer dry and we'll do some planning. We'll kind of come up with some designs and ideas of what we want to do. All right. I'm going to use a Klingon. This is an S30 Klingon. It's a short handled brush and it's a little bit smaller, but it's a flat brush. I really like this one. Uh, I like the short handles. They just fit in my hands well, but the long handled brushes are awesome. The other thing I like about the short handles is they're easy to get in tight surfaces with. So if you have drawer corners, things like that, that you need to get into or reach inside of drawers, the short handles make it a lot easier to do that with. And I'm using the S30 because I like the size. It's perfect for a small piece like this. I feel like this behind me is giving me wings. Like it looks like my hair. <laughs> do you guys see that? I'm gonna move it. It's gonna bug me. <laughs> we'll just it over here. I do have my rad pads tonight for our winners yesterday and then I will be tagging you in the comments. So if you, see that's better. Now I don't have like this crazy hair coming out of my head. Uh, if you watched the live last night and you commented rad pads, then I'm gonna pick two people to, to win these and I'll send them to you. If you didn't watch the live last night, I haven't chosen yet. So you can still go back and do it. All right, just the word rad pads in last night's live. You can find it on my page feed in here as well. Is that better? I feel like it's better. <laughs> okay. So how do we prime? We're keeping it super simple tonight. It's clean, sanded, and it's ready to go. The only thing I haven't done yet, and I just realized I haven't done this, is I'm going to put a little bit of tape on the insides, just where the drawers come in so that I don't get any primer over the edge. Just makes it a little bit easier to apply the primer and I don't have to be careful around the edges. My antlers are gone. Yes, no more antlers. We are not here for that. <laughs> oh, I'm opening it up from the wrong side. Oh, well, that's probably something I would do during a live. <clears throat> okay, wow, this is really wide tape. We can break this down and use, we can use it half of it, because that's a lot. Okay, whenever I'm typing a piece, yes, you can rip the tape on your own. It's really easy to rip painter's tape, but I always have scissors handy. Uh, in case I need a sharp edge, if I'm working on uh, like something with a frame, a framed edge or something, you always want that sharp edge. So having scissors handy makes a difference. But I can rough, I can rip this in half and use the rough edge on the interior. And then I still have my sharp edge for this outside piece that I need. So I'm just gonna put it right here. Oops. Then when I put my primer on, I don't have to worry about getting it over the edges or on the inside at all. I mean, I could sand it off, that's not a big deal, but it's kind of nice just to not have to worry about it at all. So I've learned over the years with prepping pieces that if you just take the time to tape, take that extra time, you will be so much happier in the end. Because when I'm painting, I wanna be free I'm having trouble getting this in. I wanna be free with my paint. I don't wanna be restricted and have to be so, so careful with the paint once I get the paint on the brush. I would rather take the time and be careful before I start painting and take the time to make sure that it's taped off really well. Then you can just go crazy when you start painting. You're not worried about it. All right, so we've got two there. Let's do the last two here and then we will start priming. All right. This is very technical stuff I'm showing you right now at first, so bear with me if you're super bored. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's get this taped on here. And none of this is gonna show, the drawers are gonna be in here, but for a piece especially like this, I want the insides to look nice. A lot of times when you transport drawers or a dresser, you take the drawers out to transport it. And so it's nice to have those nice clean edges on the inside. Hey Miranda, how are you? Thanks for being here tonight. I was going to make an event and plan on a specific time for today, but my kids were home from school. It was teacher development day, I guess. I need a mom development day. I should have those. 
Uh, but it was teacher development day, so it's been a little wild with kids. So instead of making an event, I thought I have to find balance between being a mom and being a business owner. And so I will hop on live, but when I'm ready. So that's why we didn't make an event today. But we're still here. And so are you, so it seemed to work out. Sometimes that's just how it goes. Okay, one tiny piece and we are there. Yes. <clears throat> oh, could, did, you, did you all hear that? Uh, my son has, there is, how many boys are downstairs? There's my three plus three extras. That's six boys down there. So if you hear random sounds, screams, hopefully not cuss words, I don't know, but if you hear that, they're fine. They're having fun. All right, we're taped, let's do this thing. That took a long time. Okay, so we're going with the light gray primer. I'm not sure what color I'm going to paint this with, but light gray is a good color to bet on as far as primers because I can still go with a white or cream. Um, but most likely knowing me, I'm going to start with a darker base anyways. So the gray primer is excellent. The dark gray is excellent for darker colors too. So if you're going to go with that, it will help give you better coverage. All right. So let's go with it. I just put on my primer pretty thin. So typically I'll dip my brush in. And if I want a really smooth finish, then I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to keep laying the paint down until my brush is completely offloaded or empty. This is how I do spindles. So if you do chair legs, you pretty much do the same thing, but in a much larger scale. But honestly, if you're gonna do chair legs, just spray them. And if you don't know how to spray, or if you have questions on it, I have a spraying unit in my cabinet class where I go over sprayers, different types of sprayers, what, what I like and what I don't, what I started out with. Um, I started out with an air compressor and a $15 spray gun from Harbor Freight, and that's still a great option. Um, so there's lots of different options in that class as well. Okay, after my brush is pretty much offloaded, there's not a lot of paint. You can see those brush lines in there. Let's say I wanna smooth those out a little bit because uh, I want to do a smoother finish. Now that there's not much paint on my brush, I'm going to come back and I'm going to go the other way. So I'm just going to cross hatch this. Okay, remember we went this way. And then this will kind of even out my paint and it will give me a smoother surface to continue painting on. Okay, and then I just offload my brush again. Or you can, another option, which I don't have right here, is to go in with a dry brush and then you can lightly, gently go over it and it will blend that nicely for you. So usually if I want to really smooth and I'm brushing, I'll have a wet brush and then I'll have a dry brush, but I'll just offload a little more. Okay, and now I'm just gonna pull it straight through. And then this is gonna give me a smoother finish. So it might be a little bit thinner. That's okay, because we're doing two coats anyways. But as far as any harsh brush lines, it's pretty smooth which is what I want. And then the rest of it will kind of fade together as that dries, as long as I just give it the time to let it dry. Hi, Marshall. Thank you for watching. Okay, my friend, my friend Marshall, she's so funny. Uh, we, were, we were stranded at 11.30 at night in Indianapolis together, downtown in Indianapolis, walking to a McDonald's because we were hungry after a, an intense event. And um, we got into a part of town that we felt like maybe wasn't the safest place to be. So we turned around and went back to a gas station and called an Uber. And when the Uber picked us up, he said uh, that there was a shooting just the night before and we should never ever be out that, in that part of town alone ever at night. So we didn't die, <laughs> but um, she's my Indianapolis almost coulda died buddy. And she watches me on her big screen, which I think is super cool and hilarious. So I don't know how many people do that. I didn't realize you could watch lives on the big on your TV, but a lot of people cast it onto their TV and watch it. So, okay, this is much more smooth. 
and I am totally good with that. So I'm going to get that coverage and smooth this on the whole thing, and then I'm gonna let it dry, and then I'll come back um, tonight, probably just before bed, throw another coat on it, and then it will be ready to paint tomorrow. I'm only gonna prime this one side with all of you tonight, if you're good with that, because I really would like to do some designing and planning on what, what do we want to do with this thing? What's it going to look like? Um, I This is not a custom piece for a client. I will be selling this piece. So I want to do something. I can do whatever I want. We could do a theme. That might be fun. Anyway, we'll prime this part and then we will we'll plan. And I would love to have your input too. So if you have some ideas as we go, please shout them out and then we can create something together. That's the point of this is we're doing it together. Okay. And then the only thing I'm not going to prime, cause I'm not sure if I want to paint it or not. Maybe we'll decide after we do our design concept is the sides of the drawers. Typically I would just salve them on a dresser. Um, I would salve the entire interior of the drawer on this, I feel like there's such small surfaces that we can really give a lot of character to every surface of the piece. And I think that's fun when you can open up a drawer and see like a pop of color or um, like a floral design. Okay, there we go. We got a nice smooth prime on there. Perfect. Oh. And you can see, I mean, it's not fully covered because I made it thin, all right, because I wanted that really nice and smooth prime. That's okay. We're going to get it all in the second coat. And we'll make sure that the second coat is completely covering the piece. Oh, missed under there, huh? You can also spray the primer when I'm doing cabinets, uh, doors, or dressers and it's and it's nice enough to spray, then I will spray the primer. And I it's a little bit thicker, so you need to dilute it. I'll probably I'll usually dilute it like 10% and then kind of go from there and see what I need to do with it. Uh, keep in mind if you do dilute it, then you do weaken the strength of its stain eliminating superpowers. So you might have to do three coats but it really just depends on the piece and then how much you thinned your primer out, okay? All right, yeah. So the whole thing will be primed and then we can paint. Okay, so what do I do with my brush now that I'm done priming? I wanna clean it. With Klingon brushes, they're self-cleaning and uh, so you can just stick them in water. Typically I have like a little chip bag clip and I'll clip it and just let the brush sit here then just kind of dangle in the water. And then that paint will slowly start to fall from the brush and it will clean itself. Then I'll come back once and kind of um, scrub it with my hand and a little bit of the Bad Ace brush soap. This stuff is freaking awesome. I love it so much. Uh, it's the brush soap from Wise Owl and the name is super cool, Bad Ace, it's awesome. Uh, but this one's Lemon Verbena. I think there's three different scents, I think. I need to double check. There's, I think there's unscented tobacco flower and lemon verbena, but maybe I need to check on that. But lemon verbena is my favorite. It doesn't matter because it's the best and it smells amazing. And, and I actually gave this to some of my friends at Christmas and I said, um, it's just to use to wash your hands and make you happy <laughs> because the smell is so nice and citrusy that it actually does make you happy. It's really great. So I love it for that. And I also love using it for my makeup brushes. So I use this all the time. Um, it's very, it's very gentle and it breaks down the oils in whatever you're using. And so it cleans it really well and it has a little bit of that oil in it. So it helps to do that, to break it up without being harsh. So lemon verbena is the stuff. Okay. All right. I'm just going to let it sit later. I'll come wash it out a little bit, the brush soap, let it sit, and then I'm done. Okay, now the fun part. Let's talk design. That's what I really wanted to do. I was waiting for this part. 
because priming is great, but I don't think it's like really fun. <laughs> Maybe some of you really like priming. Oh, I haven't done makeup on here for a long time, have I? I, did, I used to do Halloween makeup. Sometimes I did Halloween makeup looks. So that was kind of fun. Okay, so how do I come up with a design? Uh, if I'm working with a client, I will have a consult with the client and try and come up with a design that they want. Along the way, sometimes I'll come up with ideas or things that we can add in and I'll talk to them and see what they think about that. Uh, I did a, a watercolor mural for a client. She told me what she wanted and then as I went, we added some things. I thought it would be really cute to add her, her daughter's name into it, just kind of above and around one of the flowers. And so that was one of the things we ended up adding. So always be open to changing up your designs or adding things along the way because sometimes the inspiration just hits you just right. And sometimes that's like your best work, some of the most fun things you do. And I think it's fun when you can make something meaningful for a client. Uh, that's really the good stuff. That's the special stuff when you can do that because they're going to have that piece of furniture, whatever it is in their house. And you know, have a little bit of custom, makes it nice. However, this is going to be for sale. Uh, so I could add something later on if I wanted to, um, but we're gonna go with the concept that we don't know who's gonna buy it. So we're gonna do whatever we want. Uh, and in that case, I will either do whatever I want or I'll come up with a cohesive design and then I will completely go with that. So let's say I wanted this to look like you know, Lake Powell, Southern Utah. That's one of my things that I do. And the Red Rock. Okay, so I would probably start with that finish. I would give it um, some really pretty brown warm tones with like iron oxide and then bring in some blacks here. And then the, the base would be white. So that would be like our water line. Then I could add in um, some little hieroglyphics. That would be kind of cool. Uh, think about things around that place that I could add in and that would be really fun. Okay, so that could be a whole themed design. Or I could just come up with something that's classy. To me, something classy with a little bit of a sexy edge maybe would be a black with um, a matte and a sheen. So both of them together. I really like the idea of that. I think that looks really pretty. And so what I would do is I would probably paint this in a matte black, like with Wise Isle Chalk Synthesis paint, that would be a matte. And then I would come back and I would stencil on over top of that, the one hour enamel in the jet black, because that will give me a nice sheen. So then it will look kind of like a velvet wallpaper, uh, and but it will be all one color, but it has just a little bit of that, um, kind of like a, I don't know, sexiness to it. That's what I call it. I think, I think it looks really nice, classy, a really classy look. So I could do that. Then, I could come in here on the drawer sides where I said I wanted to leave them. I don't want to prime the sides because they have a kind of a cool wood. I could stain the wood with an ebony stain and then uh, that would give me kind of like a nude black tone. Or I could just take the one hour enamel in the jet black, water it down and do a wash and then that will give me the same effect essentially. So that could be kind of a, a sexy finish with the black, black on black. Two different sheens stenciled with nude drawer sides and then I could add a little bit of color somewhere else so I could do some color on the inside I could do a floral decoupage uh, or another colored velvet if I decide to take the blue out okay I could make it fun and do some florals on the front some hand-painted florals or I could use a transfer one of these, I love this transfer. This is one of my favorites. It's from Redesign with Prima. I will find out the name of this transfer and I will put it in the links if you're wondering because it's, it's a small transfer, but I really love it because it's, it's really beautiful. Uh, so I'll save that. So I could do something like that with that black edge and then you have a little bit of that, the feminine florals on the front, which would be really nice touch, okay? So we've got, a, you know, like a Utah, a themed look, the black on black with the florals, or I could do something really bright and fun and play off of the blue velvet. So if I wanted to clean the blue velvet, leave it in there. We could do, you could do always go with white. I'm not really a white kind of girl. We could go with some color. So I have a color sapphire from Wiesel. It's about this blue tone. 
and we could blend it in with some lighter blues and then have a really cool, intense sapphire tone. And then we could add some bright colored florals and hand paint them on, okay? The last idea I was thinking is go with greens. And it was, it's like the same green as this. It's dark forest. It's the new one hour enamel color. Uh, and one of my favorite clients just painted her wall in the one hour ceramic. And I'm gonna share some pictures with you tonight. So you have to watch for that, All right? So those are my ideas right now. Uh, Miranda says, it's okay to water down OHE. Yes, for I do washes with one hour enamel. So you can take the one hour enamel and water it down and then you can use it as a stain on your pieces. And then guess what? It actually seals it too. What? Yeah, it does. It's cool. I've done it on chairs and it's really beautiful. Uh, I used the one hour enamel antique villa and I did it on a large wood hutch that was really pretty. So yes, you can use it as a wash or a stain in any of the one hour enamel colors and just water it down. Now, if you're going to be painting with straight one hour enamel and you're not using it as a stain or a wash, then no, I would not recommend watering it down unless you were to spray it and then don't water it down any more than 10% or you will degrade um, the finish. All right, so tell me what you're thinking. Okay, it reminds you of a clock tower, Dottie. That's funny because it, 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 it actually is. <laughs> On the first slide, you can see it. So I removed it. But this, and, and that's why I suggested black, because I think the black on black with that stencil would look really cool with the clock too. So I removed it because I'm gonna prime it, but it goes, this has little tacks. So it goes just right in there. And then it has the clock hands too. And it actually works, it's a music box. That's not playing right now. But it also has the little clock on front. So I think that's funny that you said that reminds you of the clock tower, because it kind of is. Yeah, it, but I also think, I don't know if this blue velvet's gonna clean up well. So I'm thinking of replacing it. I could do the black on black here, and then I could get like a cool printed velvet, floral velvet, that would be cool. You know, like it was big in the 70s, velvet pants. Well, they're back. I'm seeing them everywhere I go, and they're fun. So maybe I could get some floral velvet and put it on there and do the black on black. All right, Scott, if I did the black on black, would you seal the chalk paint before adding the one hour enamel? That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, I, it depends. So it depends on which order you do it in as well. <laughs> if I'm going to paint the chalk paint down, the chalk synthesis paint down first, then uh, I could paint the one hour enamel over it. But then when I go to put a top coat over all of that, it's going to change the sheen of both to the same sheen, which is defeating the purpose of what I'm doing, right? So the other option is I can do that and then I can seal seal it with um, furniture salve. Then that's going to seal the chalk synthesis paint underneath and it's not going to affect the enamel because the enamel already has that built-in top coat, so it's not gonna to adhere to it. So I could totally do that. Or I would do the chalk synthesis paint and then I would seal it with a matte varnish. So the matte varnish from Wiesel Paint, I would seal it with and then I would come back over and stencil over the top of that with the one hour enamel in the jet black and then I'm done. I don't need another top coat, okay? Don't, however, use the chalk paint and then seal it with a salve or a wax and then try to stencil over the top of it because that salve or wax will repel it and it's not going to adhere the way you want it to. Okay, I hope that was a good enough answer for you. Okay, so those are my ideas for now. I really am liking the colorful velvet idea, although I'm not sure that I want to replace all the velvet in there. Maybe some of you have seen something cool like that. I really did want to paint some florals. So I, and I was thinking this had doors that opened. A lot of the jewelry boxes have um, doors that open here. At, they don't have this, but then you can hang all of your necklaces in them. If it had that, then I would paint the florals on the side for sure because it would be a peekaboo effect. And I think it's really fun to do things like that. Uh, that's why I think painting the, let's go in, this is backwards. Painting the, 
outside edges of the drawers a floral or staining them is fun because you see that just when they peekaboo out. And I think that's nice. So that is where we're at for today. Oh, don't worry about it, Pam. I told everyone I didn't, I didn't make an event because it was a wild day and the kids were home. And so we were just going to go live when we went live. So you are great. I'm glad you're here. Okay. With that, I'm going to let you go for tonight. I'm going to think on it and I'll come, I'll come back and check your comments and see where we're at and what you guys think and what your ideas are. If you have another idea, maybe I missed it, probably, then say it. Let me know what you think and um, let's do this together. So I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, and don't forget, if you didn't do rad pads in the last video, go do it because I'm, I'm going to pick a winner in the next, like, within the hour. I'm going to pick a winner, two winners. All right. All right. See you guys later.